Welcome back, friends and DGENs. I finally got here at Firekeepers to play the MSPT. Oh. How many times am I gonna have to lose before I just give up? As many times as necessary. So should I just skip Vegas entirely to save money? Blasphemy! <laughs> Look familiar? Scenes like these are happening in every casino right now. And you could be next. That is, unless you make the most important decision of your life. Prove to yourself that you have the strength and courage to be free. Join the part-time poker army. Redefine your toxic marriage. No. Play massive yellow bomb pots. Should've said more than 20 on the flop, huh? Befriend world-famous poker pros. I was gonna call you, I was like, I haven't... Eat exotic new mac and cheeses. Oh. Mm. And learn to ignore all the intolerable bad beat poker stories. Wow. Yeah. Of course, I Unbelievable. Raised the first hand to get Become a hero. Become a DJ. Become a subscriber. I'm Mike Reardon, part-time poker pro, and this is the MSPT Firekeepers main event. Of course, I've raised the first hand to get aces. Welcome back, friends and DJ. Oh. I budgeted for three buy-ins at $1,100 each, and I plan to play each day one, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, for the best chance at surviving to day two. Let's put our budget up there. $3,330. I also booked a double queen at Firekeepers from Thursday through Sunday to make the whole weekend more comfortable. Several of my Detroit poker bros asked to split the room with me, but I gave Wayne first dibs because he's my best friend, he was in last year's video, and most importantly, he agreed to drive. You've got a deal. Day 1A starts at noon, so Kayla dropped me off at Wayne's house around 9 a.m. I was gonna be gone for four days, so I left Kayla the car and some spending money for snacks and such. No. Love you. This greedy ass bitch. Wayne had just whipped up a batch of delicious bacon and eggs when I arrived. And even though I was full after eating that Stouffer's mac and cheese that someone left out on the counter all night, you all know that I can't pass on a free continental breakfast. What a savings. The drive to Firekeepers was only 90 minutes. And thank God, because that ride was unbearable. The whole way there, Wayne wouldn't shut up about how the 100 kilowatt hour battery in his 2024 Cadillac Lyric is so much better than my Nissan Leaf's 40 kilowatt hour battery. Ooh, look at me. My car can drive all the way to Firekeepers and back without having to recharge. Shut up! God, I hope Wayne wins something this weekend. Otherwise, I'm going to have to listen to all of his bad beat stories the entire drive home. I don't think I can take that. Once we checked into the hotel, Wayne wouldn't stop bitching about how the free electric vehicle chargers are too slow. They worked fine on my car. Just saying. But given that it was a slow ass 6.6 .6 charger, I want to just be able to make sure that it's charging. I encouraged him to go register for the tournament while I hang back and take care of some important paperwork. And then I patted my belly three times like this. Oh shit. Everyone knows this is the international gesture for that awful breakfast you fed me is about to blast off like a confetti cannon at a poorly rehearsed wedding. But with significantly less applause. Over the next three hours, I endured three more episodes of violent tummy turbulence before I was able to enter the tournament at level four. And just like Wayne's explosive breakfast, the bad news continued to surprise me when I least expected it. When I sat down in seat four, I noticed a familiar face in seat five. Sitting to my left was none other than Pat motherfucking Steele, one of the greatest tournament players of all time. Pat is a friend of mine. I would even call him a mentor as he's given me lots of helpful tournament advice over the years, especially back in 2018 when his guidance definitely helped me cash in the World Series of Poker main event. Pat is a super cool and friendly dude, but I do not ever want him at the same table as me in a tournament, and especially not sitting to my left. Oh shit, it's upgrade. For those of you who don't understand seat position, you never want a strong player directly on your left. They get to play all but one hand in every rotation with positional advantage on you. But that's just the luck of the draw, and you can't change seats in tournaments, so all I could do was play through it. I like the energy, let's play through. After an hour of boring hands, the next wave of crappy news blasted me when a 
new player sat down at my table. And this was the one, the only, Dash Dudley! I am here with Dash Dudley, who just took down the 10K PLO Championship. I got so many good friends. What does it feel like to finally get that bracelet and have this huge million dollar cash? Um... Unbelievable! That's right, the Lansing local, three-time WSOP bracelet winner, one of my favorite Detroit poker bros, and longtime fan of the show, Dash is one of the fiercest opponents you'll ever face on the felt. And the worst part is, after knocking you out, he gives you an extended hug that instantly melts away all of your problems so that you don't go on tilt and do something stupid, like rebuy real late into the tournament, or play in the big PLO cash game, or pick a fight with your wife over text messages. <laughs> Between Pat on my left, Dash on my right, and a measly 15 big blind stack, I had to play very carefully. I can beat this table. I've studied this game for years. I own at least six books on tournament poker, and I've even started reading most of them. In fact, this probably gives me a slight edge over the rest. And I'm out. Dash got me. Yep, I didn't even record the hand. Luckily, a friend of mine let me borrow one of his bad beat stories. Yeah, second hand I'm there. Of course, I've raised the first hand to get aces. And we're off to a rocky start. Budget update, we're down $1,110, leaving us $2,200. I started texting Kayla as I power walked over to the cage to rebuy, but Dash quickly blocked my path. Give us a hug. Don't be mad, come on. See, mm. don't you feel better already? Just don't pick a fight with Kayla. I said, don't. Sorry, dude. Even though his apology hug stopped me from rebuying into the tournament or picking a fight with Kayla, it wasn't enough to keep me from the cash game. So I sat down with $500 at 1-3 PLO. <laughs> PLO was a lot of fun. God damn it, Wayne busted out. Did you just get out? Yeah, finally got on a little here, so it's a 88k. Oh! The second hand I'm there. Of course, I raised the first hand for good aces. After pretending to listen to 15 minutes of bad beat stories, Wayne finally sat down to play cash at a different table. Thank God, because five minutes later, I ran into this spectacular hand. I'm in the cutoff, so I have good position. I raised the 20, and there's five callers. I flop the second nut flush draw on a paired board. I'm not very committed to this hand. It checks to the hijack, he bets 20, and four of us call. The Miracle King on the turn gives me the nut boat. Unbelievable! The hijack C bets for 45. I raise to 200. Everybody else folds. And this dude stares me down for a while and then eventually throws two black chips into the pot. The river is three of clubs. He quickly checks. I go all in and he instant calls. Then he shows me his 4 7. He flopped a boat. I turned a bigger boat. So I win a nice, big, juicy pot, which clears me out of everything I lost for that day. I played a few more hands and I cashed out $1,640. That gives me a wash on the buy in that I lost, plus it leaves me a couple extra bucks for some dinner. Updating the budget, we're $30 over from what we started. We got $33.60 left. I ordered the brisket mac and cheese from Smoke and Fire for dinner. Oh my god, dude. It was so good. Easily. The best mac and cheese I've had all year. <laughs> So, Thursday was a wash. Tomorrow will be better. I'll just make sure to skip breakfast. Yeah! When I woke up Friday morning, Wayne was missing. His bed was untouched, his car was gone, and he hadn't even touched the mac and cheese I left out on the table for him. What a waste. Then I noticed that he texted me around 4 a.m. saying, I lost all my money at cash, so I went home. I didn't stay in the room, so it's not fair and I pay half. P.S. Don't rat me out. Navi thinks I was working late yesterday. Let me get this straight. He feeds me poison breakfast, stiffs me on the hotel bill, abandons me in Battle Creek, and lets a perfectly good mac and cheese go to waste? And then he wants me to cover for his ass? Fat chance! It was almost noon by the time I finished tagging Wayne on Facebook, so I didn't have time to shower before starting day 1B. Lucky for me, nobody ever seems to notice. Blinds are 200, 300. I'm in middle position with king, queen offsuit. Baby case raises to 1100. I call, folds around so it's heads up. I flop top two pair, hell yeah. Baby cakes bets to 1500. I raise to 3500. He calls, a queen on the turn to give me a boat. He checks, I bet 6500, he insta folds. Easy money. Blinds are still 200, 300. I'm in middle position with pocket eights. Under the gun two raises to 800, I flat call. There's four people on the flop. The flop is two jack queen. It checks to me, I bet 1100. Big gulp calls and the other two players fold. 
We catch an ace on the turn. I check, big gulp checks, and hey oh, I hit an eight on the river. So you'd think I'd bet, but I don't. I check, big gulp raises to 2200, and I decide to call. I show my set of eights, and this motherfucker had king 10 for the straight on the turn. He's over there sleeping on me. There's nothing you can do about it. Next hand is pocket eights again. The same eights, in fact. Senator Rick Scott calls for 300. I raise to 800, and we get two callers. King, Jack, King on the flop. Both players check. I bet 1,200. Both players fold. I win the pot. That's routine play. Strictly routine. All right, middle position with pocket twos. Blinds are 200, 400. I call, and we get six players of the flop. I flop bottom set deuces. Everybody checks. The turn brings the six of clubs. I bet 1,200. Toothpick raises to 3,600. I call. We see a seven of spades for the river, and Toothpick bets 4,600. I raise to 11,000. Toothpick calls. He showed ace jack. Mike wins a nice pot. Tell me likey. Tell me want wingy. I have king two of diamonds with 41,000 chips. Blinds are 500, 1,000. I raise to 2,300. The lady to my left and the big blind both call my raise. I hit two diamonds on the flop for a flush draw. Big blind checks. I raise to 4,400. The lady calls. Big blind folds. It's heads up now. I hit the eight of diamonds on the turn for the second nut flush. I bet 6,100. And the lady calls. The river is the king of hearts. I feel comfortable betting 7,200. She calls. I show my flush. Turns out the same card that gave me the flush gave her a straight. Feels good. Blinds are 1,000, 2,000. I'm in the big blind with ace nine of spades. There's three players of the flop. We got an 8,000 chip pot. I flop a straight draw and the nut flush draw. It checks around the splashy who bets 6,000. Small blind calls 6,000, and now that 20,000 is in the pot, I decide I'm not just gonna call. I raise to 35,000. Splashy has a ton of chips. He might actually make it, and I have lots of outs. But as I expected, he was trying to buy the pot. He folds. Small blind, however, calls. The queen of hearts on the turn does not help me, and the queen of clubs on the river does not help me. The small blind shows that he flopped the nut straight. So I was still very live, but now I'm in trouble. I have 10,000 chips left. So that's not good. I'm small blind with pocket fours. Low Jack raises the 5,000, just putting on pressure. I go all in for 13,000. I've got a pair. He calls. He shows king eight offsuit. He hits his bottom pair. Seven of clubs on the turn, king on the two pair on the river, whatever. F I lose. You lose. Let's knock off $1,100 from our budget, bringing us down to 2250. <laughs> I'm on my third bullet. I got a fresh stack of 30K chips and I'm under the gun. I get pocket tens. I jam all in. The guy to my left immediately jams all in over the top, which is never a good sign. It folds all the way around. We expose our hands. I see how f***ed I am because he's got aces and no help comes from me. There's bullet number three gone in an instant. Why'd you do that? Budget's down to 1140. Normally I would have grabbed all my stuff and went home, but since Wayne abandoned me here, I had no choice but to buy in from the big PLO cash game. So he's looking to see us in your text. Okay, how far is it on the list right now? Uh, I don't believe- I was gonna have to wait for a seat at PLO for quite some time because there was about 30 people ahead of me on the list. What are you gonna do? I ordered more of that delightful brisket mac and mm. cheese for dinner and browse our poker. If you aren't familiar with the poker subreddit, it's great. It's an acquired taste that really only has a few types of content. Meta humor and memes, which is self-explanatory. General advice, often sarcastic. Hand analysis, which is usually trolling. Bad beat stories, Wayne posts here almost daily. And of course, my favorite, photos of other people's chip stacks. You know, for those nights when you can't seem to get your chip stack up. Ran godly at the 1 2 at MGM. Didn't get a chance to snap the final chip stack. Ooh. Oh, OP. You are a tease. Ooh, 1200. 1500. Oh, f yeah. 1800. God damn. Ooh, OP. If I was there, I'd buy a max stack and I'd get it all in blind so fast. The list for PLO hadn't moved in over an hour, so I started to doubt if I would even get to play tonight. I felt my eyelids growing heavier as I mindlessly browsed for chip picks and poker memes for another 30 minutes before passing out. The last thing I remember from Friday night was this hilarious meme post about some ancient Chinese sorcery, a ritual that can increase your odds of winning your poker flips. This spell was called the All-In Backpack Equity Buff, 
And according to Reddit user ID, here's how to properly cast the all-in backpack equity buff. Wait until the hands are free. See you're behind, tap the table twice and say, ah, nice hand. Then stand Keep up. Keep one hand on the table rail as you watch the flop. When your hand doesn't improve, nod your head and pick up your back. This will give you 20% additional odds to hit your outs on the turn. If the turn misses you, put the backpack on and start turning from the table. If done correctly, you'll have an additional 30% chance to hit whatever outs you need on the river. Fair warning, performing this ritual improperly or too frequently can awaken the gods. Today is day 1C, the last day to start the tournament for day 1. Before starting to play at noon, I ignored several bad omens. I still didn't have a ride home lined up, Danny never showed up for his tournament training, and the breakfast from Smoke and Fire tasted like absolute dog How hard is it to poach a goddamn egg properly? Despite losing two bullets already, I was in a surprisingly good mood because these big events bring so many people together. I was thrilled to catch up with so many old friends, some that I haven't seen in years. Uh, what up? Nice fanny pack. First. Hello. Most of my poker friends told me that they enjoy my videos. And even though we all play this game of constant bluffing, deception, and lying, I can tell that this time they're being sincere and not just being polite. And that's really cool. Also, over these last couple days, about 10 players that I've never met recognized me and introduced themselves explaining that they're fans of the vlog. That's seriously amazing. I know I posted I was coming here and I wore the same outfit that I usually do, but it still surprised me every time someone new came and said hello. So to all of you out there, I wanted to say thank you so much for watching and saying hi, and you have no idea how much it means to me that even anybody likes these videos that I make. I hope to see everyone back here for the next MSPT in October. So all of that, plus a good night's sleep, put me in a great mood. Part time. Saturday. I'm on the button with pocket fours. Blinds are 100, 200. Old man coffee raises the 700. I call and so does the big blind. The flop is ace, king, seven, and everybody checks. A miracle turn for me. I hit a four for my set. Big blind checks. Old man coffee checks. I bet a thousand. Big blind calls. Old man coffee calls. We fill up on the river. I tank for a while. This is my last bullet. I really can't find it in me to bet. He doesn't understand. Explain. I am concerned that Old Man Coffee is slow playing something like Ace King. Oh, there it is. Because if anybody's gonna be sleeping on Ace King waiting for me to bet, especially after I bet the last time, it's gonna be this guy, Old Man Coffee. My read was correct. He didn't have Ace King, but he had Ace Queen, which is basically the same range. It sucks, I would have gotten called. I guess I should have raised and just got ready to go all in with it. It's shitty, because if you think he has Ace King, and then Ace Ace King is on the board, and you also have the smallest boat, are you gonna trust your gut? You have to trust your gut. King Eight of Diamonds, I go all in. Routine poker, part time. Pocket fives. I jam for 10,600. Routine poker. It's part time, dick. 600, 1200. I'm under the gun with 11 big blinds, holding King Queen off. This is a no brainer. I'm all in for 13,000. No hesitation, no surrender. It folds to the cutoff. Cutoff tanks for a minute and jams for 22,000. The small blind tanks and goes all in over the top, which forces the big blind to fold. The small blind then exposes his hand and explained that he assumed we had high card, so his 7 8 offsuit would be live. <laughs> No hesitation! Nah. Look, dude, I don't give a shit how you justify making a bad play like that. Do it every time, please. I was just thrilled to see that I was ahead of one other player. No hesitation! No surrender! Then the cutoff tabled his hand, and he's got Ace King. Oh, shit. That gives me three outs if I want to survive. I'm screwed. While the dealer was counting the pots, I suddenly remembered about that meme post on Reddit about the ancient Chinese ritual for the all-in backpack equity buff. Even though the post was clearly a joke, I was desperate enough to try anything that could improve my odds of hitting it out. I'll do anything. Well, here we go. I tapped the table twice and uttered the words, ah, nice hand, while I stood up. I kept one hand on the table as the flop came out. Damn it, I didn't hit a queen, and now I only have a 2% chance to win. Holy f***ing sh did small blind just flop a straight? Oh, I'm so f in a frenzy, I combined the last two moves by nodding my head as I swung my backpack on for the bonus 20 and 30% chance to hit. To hit something. To hit anything. I don't even know what cards I need yet. I just needed to finish the ritual as fast as possible. The seven of spades shows up on the turn. I quickly say, ah, nice hand, and I excitedly start tapping on the table. That's when I realized that there was still hope that we could chop the pot if an eight hits the river. Stay focused. Finish the spell. I started turning from the table, increasing my odds to hit an 8 by 50%. An 8 on the river! Chop pot! How the hell did I survive that run out? Sorcery is real! 
What the f***? The whole scene was absolutely remarkable. The energy in the room was electric. Everyone was screaming and cheering. The guy in seat seven, big guy, huge guy, walked over to me, tears streaming down his face. And he said, sir, sir, that was the greatest suck out I've ever seen. And then everybody clapped. Okay, maybe they didn't clap. We split the pot three ways and I lived to see another hand. Well, you got lucky. You got lucky. You got lucky there. Yep. Now that I think of it, that might actually count for one of my silent aces taskers. Hold on a sec. Win a pot using ancient Egyptian sorcery. That's close enough. We're gonna put win a pot using ancient Egyptian sorcery as complete for task number five. Hey, that puts me halfway through my goal of becoming a full-time poker pro. All right, let's get back to the game. After another orbit, I found myself in a tough spot again. Blinds are 600 and 1200, and I'm big blind. After paying the 1200 big blind any, I only had 4400 chips left, which is only three and a half bigs. Action folds to the cutoff, who raises to 3k. Both the button and small blind call. I have queen six of hearts. It's a bad hand, but you know, it's suited. Oh, and and there's always a good chance that another player will isolate, so I don't have to beat all three other players to survive. So I went all in for 4400, and everybody calls. The flop runs out. Queen of spades, 10 of hearts, 8 of hearts, and all the other players immediately get it all in. I quickly tap the table, blurting out, oh, nice hand, while putting on my backpack. Everyone tables their hands. Ace King suited for the cutoff. Button has King Jack off. And Small Blind has the best hand, Queen 10 for top two pair. Come on, God you give me a heart. I did the ritual. My 37% chance to hit the flush should be about 50% higher now. But with the extra 50% from the all-in backpack equity buff, I have a 73% chance to hit the flush on the river. Come on. Come on, do it. Blank. What a crock of shit, dude. I didn't even believe it for a second. All right. Let's update the budget. Out of our $3,330 budget, we have $30 left. I was beyond frustrated. I couldn't bear the thought of my new fans watching me take the walk of shame for the fourth time. Aww. So I did what any sane person would do. I put on a disguise so they wouldn't see it was me. Then I just wandered around aimlessly for what seemed like hours. Lost, frustrated, confused. I found this Panda Empire slot machine that seemed pretty cool. But then before you know it, I was out of money again. I don't know why I did what I did next, but I was desperate. I put my hands together and I prayed. Dear Psychic Panda Pixie of Slots, I know I don't usually pray to you. In fact, some days I don't even think you exist. But if you could grant me some guidance, please show me a sign. <laughs> Stand true, part-timer. What is that? It is I, the Psychic Panda Pixie of Slots. <laughs> so you are real. Heed my words, part-timer. Your journey is far from over. But how many times am I going to have to lose before I just give up? As many times as necessary. So should I just skip Vegas entirely to save money? Blasphemy! Would a full-timer quit this close to a bank? But if I lose in Vegas, that'll wipe out my whole bankroll. You have several other liquidation options. Like what? Take out a second mortgage. Oh, another one? Or do you mean a third mortgage? Oh, well, cash out your 401k. But I need that for my retirement. Cash out. Your 401k. I think there's penalties and stuff. Cash out your 401k! What say you, part-time? Will you live a risk-free, comfortable, boring life? Will you double down yet again and continue the thrill ride of gambling outside your means? You must choose! Okay, well then, I'm gonna go play Vegas and cash out my 401k. I don't need this anymore. Oh.
The Psychic Panda Pixie is right. I'm way overdue for a win. So there's no chance that I'm canceling my Vegas trip. I'll be in Las Vegas for the main event, July 4th. I still have $6,670 left in my summer gambling budget. So I won't cash out my 401k unless I lose the rest. I can feel the bink coming. If you see me in Vegas, feel free to come say hi. And if you show me that you're subscribed to this channel, then I'll listen to one of your terrible bad beat stories. I can't wait, summer.